Good morning, and thanks for joining me. Um, today, we're going to learn how to digitize a split design um, using Paint. That's Microsoft Paint, um, SoArt, and then you can stay tuned for the rest of the video if you want to see how I put um, a name into the middle. But if you just want to do it on your machine, um, just digitize this part in Paint, or well, create it in Paint, digitize it in SoArt, and then create it on your machine. So you can just add your lettering in there as well. Okay, so we're going to start out. We can do a fill design that's split, and I'll show you real quick how we're going to do that, but we're going to actually do an applique one today because I love applique. Okay, so let's pretend we're going to do a filled one just for fun. And then we're going to go up here. First, we created the heart. I did that before you guys came on just so it could be cute whenever I started the video. And then we're going to choose this, um, this circle, I mean rectangle, sorry. My cat is very obsessed with something right now. He's distracting me, so please forgive me. <laughs> okay, but we're going to change the outline color to red. That's just going to make it easier whenever um, it's time to put the satin stitch on those end ones, but we want it to be filled with the white because if we don't, oops, if we don't fill it with the white, then we have to go in and erase all that stuff. And I'm just, I'm lazy. I like the path of least resistance. I'm not afraid to say it. So I'm going to click up here and hit solid color. And then as big as you choose it, if you really want it to be precise, you can put on your grid lines. So I'm not really a precise person. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But I'll try every once in a while. Okay, so at least try to make it, you know, even on the sides. And then you can move this around to however, but you can always line up your middle right there. Okay, and then we'll turn off our grid lines. Let's go home. Let's go to our eraser. Zoom in really good. And then we're gonna click right underneath it. See how it's perfect? If you don't get it perfect, just try it again. You do want it perfect because it's not hard to make it perfect on this one. So just give it that little bit of effort and it helps the, the design just look better in the end. Okay. So, oops, see how I did that? I don't want that. And I'm not generally a perfectionist. Like I said, you know, I don't usually measure my stuff too intensely while I'm playing and teaching because we're learning and having fun. Okay, so there we go. There's our split design. So easy. These people charge you $3.99. Sometimes $5.99 for these. And look at how simple that was. So easy. Okay, so there we go. That's if we're gonna do it filled, that's what we, what it's going to look like. And then whenever you go into sew art, you're just gonna click fill there, satin stitch there, fill there, satin stitch there. Super easy, right? But we're not going to do that. We're gonna do applique because it's generally how the file is sold as an applique. And that's still really, really simple. So I'm just going to start a whole new file real quick because it's gonna be simple instead of undoing everything. Okay, let's do our heart. It's This is kind of always the default that it comes to is um, the outline black and white. So I'm happy about that. So let's move it there and change it to red. Remember to fill it with solid color. Color two is white. And go in. And the same instances apply with these guys. Um, you go in and you delete that. Let's zoom in so it's nice. Okay, probably didn't need to go through this whole process again, but. For some people, you know, it's helpful to see the entire thing. Okay, and I'll do it really quickly, so. Da -da. 
There we go. Okay, so let's zoom out. Colors are done. There's your split design. I think maybe I did a little bit too close on the sides. So whenever I do select or too far out on the sides, I'm going to shave it down a little bit with the select tool. That looks good. Crop, select all, and sorry, copy. And then we'll go right into sew art. Hope you guys are doing okay wherever you are. We've been having rain, 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 rain. And it's Oregon, so what do you expect? But I was kind of hoping for an Indian summer. <laughs> okay, so let's hit paste. And um, let's go ahead and resize it. Well, let's crop it first, actually, because right here we can save some space. Right there we can save some space. And you used to have to go over here and hit click or click and crop, but now you just go up here and and crop. It's very nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and resize my hoop. As you must know by now, it's a four by four, and so the biggest um, it can be is three point nine. And now this kind of skew the way it looks a little bit, but it's all still going to work the same. Okay. Okay, so. There we go, it's very simple. Now, um, it gives us the posturize option because we have three colors, but we don't really need it. We don't need the image wizard, color reduction, any of that stuff. Because whenever you hit color reduction, you have three colors. You have your white, your black, and your red. Okay, so we'll go over here, stitch image, and we're gonna click the applique center line. We're gonna click this to be a 40 and this to be a two. And we're going to go ahead and click the black. And yes, that's going to leave this bottom part open when we're doing this part of the design. But when we're doing the sew out, I'll show you how that's going to be okay. Well, I should tell you anyways. So it's going to do the, the color that you choose. And then um, it's only going to do this top part. So it's going to give you your, your three steps. You're going to lay down. It's going to give you your dye line. Then you're going to lay down your fabric. And then it's going to give you your tack down, which is going to be a running stitch. And then it's going to do this. But this is going to kind of be left out in the open. And you're like, eh, what do I do with that? And you don't want to cut it. Don't bother cutting it yet. Because whenever you, um, you're going to do that one, and then you're going to go ahead and do this one. And you're going to leave that one uncut too. Leave a little bit open there. And then whenever you go here to do your um, satin stitch along the edging for the border, you want to, that's going to give you your die line as well. It's going to be a running stitch. It's just going to go right over this fabric um, that you've put down here. So it's going to complete your, your outline. And then it's going to do the tack down stitch. So once this die line is in place, then go ahead and cut your fabric. And then it's going to do a tack down stitch for the satin stitch. And that um, is going to be a zigzag. And then it's going to do the satin stitch. And same with up here. So you, we're going to click on, oops, we're going to click on the red maybe. And um, and whenever it puts its die line down, that's whenever you're going to, it's going to, it's going to tack it down with the die line. You're going to cut your fabric and it's going to do the actual tack down. And then it'll do the final satin stitch. So there's only four, four pieces here but whenever we open it it's actually going to be 12 because each turn has three steps I hope that makes sense okay so we're going to go ahead and file save as and I'm not going to save a picture but I am going to save it on my desktop in a temporary folder it says new folder we're going to call it split heart I already have one from one I worked on earlier to make sure this is even going to work Okay, so let's click save. Already exists. Yes, sorry about that loud noise, guys. All right, so I like to leave SOAR open in case I messed up. So I'm just gonna close it a little. Same with paint. I like to leave those open so I can, you know, 
change anything, move things around. Um, if I realize that I messed up, I can just go back and easily change it because it's still open instead of having to recreate the whole entire thing. So, all right. Here we are in So What Pro. And we're going to open. We're not going to open that. We're going to open the desktop. New folder number three, split heart, open. And in So What Pro, it'll give you a really pretty idea of what it's going to look like. This is called texture. And you can turn this on, I believe, in the view. Yep, right here, texture. And you can also turn on your jump lines. So I'm going to show dash. Let's see. And it shows you where your jump lines are going to be. So you're not all, you know, surprised whenever it happens and you can see if it makes sense. And that looks pretty simple. They're very simple and nice. So I'm not, I don't have any worry about any of this stuff. Now in here, we can go ahead and change the colors. Um, the tack downs are going to be, or the dye lines are going to be black. The tack downs are going to be white. And the final satin stitch, let's change it to... Oh, let's make it for Ella because her birthday is coming up. And let's see. Let's make it that medium pink. That's not what I would call it, but whatever. <laughs> and let's make this medium pink as well. And you can, there's tons of different colors to choose from, different thread types. I use so many different kinds of um, threads that, where in the world is medium pink? I just always go with the default that's Brilder because I change it myself randomly. Okay, so they have a red line here for the dye line. Now that's confusing to me. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to black because that's what my other dye lines are. It just makes sense. So the Brildor Black 1999. I don't know why they have so many different blacks. That's just silly. Okay, we're going to change that to black. And the tack down, let's go ahead and change that to white because that's what the other tack down is. And then the final stitch. Let's see, what color would I use? Well, Lord knows I don't want to use foxy red. I, I mean, maybe the Lord doesn't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, gosh. Okay, so let's go ahead and make that. Sorry, I seemed to go out of my mind there. I was looking at my thread, seeing what colors I had. Let's just make that a light pink or pale pink. Okay, so then same thing up here. Let's make it black. Oops, don't want to do that. Let's do 1999. There we go. Okay, and then let's change this to white. And that color for white is 1100. Oh, that's so much easier. I'm still learning So It Pro. I am definitely not a pro at So It Pro at all. <laughs> but I'm learning, getting there. It's really fun. I'm really glad I have it. Okay, so here we go. We have a cute you know, purplish pink and light pink. Excuse me. And now everything makes sense to my brain. That's what I love about So What Pro is we can take what So Art has done and refine it and make it beautiful. Okay, so in here, now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to File. We're going to click Merge. And we're going to go up to wherever it is that you save your um, font files. And they do have a lettering option in So What Pro, but it's not very good. It's it's basically like digitizing something in So Art. It's not that great. And it only uses stuff that you already have on your computer, which most people don't have very a lot of fonts already on their computer. So you can try it. Not, you know, totally busting it down. But okay, so let's go to embroidery. And I love Planet Applique's fonts. They're just simple. Um, let's do a cute one for Ella. Let's do 
Melissa, I think, is pretty cute. So I like my capital E's to be noticeably an E. So this one works really good for me. And I'm going to choose the smallest one because we're going to make it even smaller. So, and, and you can play around with these sizes. You know, this isn't the end all be all. This is, you know, totally, completely up to you. You can make this middle part much bigger. You can make the whole thing bigger. Hopefully you have a bigger hoop and you can make the entire thing way bigger. Um, let's see. Now, so I've clicked my E. I've merged my E. And I'm going to go up here to icons and the icons is going to load. And what icons does is it allows us to choose it um, throughout the alphabet and it writes it in instead of having to go up to file merge, file merge, file merge, file merge each and every single time you have your alphabet over here. So let's make Ella's name so pretty. I love this font. And their stuff always stitches out. So super gorgeous. Okay, so double click on everyone. And we're going to center it. Okay. And I think you can just go ahead and do that. But I've watched in a video in the past that that doesn't always preserve the the um oh the aspect ratio that's the word it doesn't keep it all nice and neat together like it has to reconfigure itself but that was an old video so i'm just you know warning you not to use that if if you've had bad results i've never actually tried it oh no what did that do nope i want my letters back <laughs> I was trying to make the letter smaller, made the whole thing smaller. Okay, so let's do this. Um, 50%. Click OK. That's still too big. And let's do 75% of that. <laughs> okay, I made my heart really small. I'm going to click on this resize i'm gonna not lock the aspect ratio i'm going to measure in percent of size or percent of initial size i'm going to bump my height up and see how it goes there we go and now ella fits in there all nice and pretty so maybe it wouldn't be my first choice in this shape of this heart but that's how I was able to fix it in sew art. So we have our letters. They're perfectly spaced. Everything looks good. This little dash line is not going to show up in our actual sew out. This is just showing us where the jump stitches are for everything. So let's click out of icons. Let's go back down here and let's make these all the same color. So let's do harvest gold since there's already two that are like that and that's less work. And then 206. Okay. Okay, so it's all harvest gold. Now, this is one of my favorite pieces of sew art as well. Ooh, the first one didn't change because I didn't actually click it, I think. <laughs> okay, here's one of my favorite things about sew art. So we can go to file or edit, join threads. Whenever you're on your machine and doing lettering, you have to click each one individually and um, and uh, try to try to figure out where it's at by eye, like try to get it in there by eye. But you could, you know, essentially be up here, down there. It's really hard. So I love having sewer for that. But as well as join all adjacent threads of same color starting at thread number 13. Okay, that's going to make that word all just one thread. So it's going to skip, 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 skip. You don't have to go in and change it every single time or hit the next button and play. I mean, well, start, I guess that's the 
the name of it on the machine. <laughs> I call it play. Okay, so there you guys go. Split design created from scratch and um, finished off in Sew Up Pro. I hope that this was helpful for you guys. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. You know, like I said, I'm, I am still learning Sew Art and I'm super still learning Sew Up Pro. So I am always open to suggestions and help and, um, you know, things that have worked for you guys. And please continue to post pictures on the Sew Art page of your work that you've done with Sew Art and post your actual Sew Outs so that we can see how it turned out and, um, you know, maybe help you if, if there was a problem or we can learn from you how to do it ourselves. And, you know, this looks really pretty on the screen. But I promise you, it's not going to look exactly the same whenever it prints out. I think that maybe I might not like how this comes out. This might all be a little bit too separated and jumbled for me. But I don't know until I print it out, you know. I mean, sew it out. <laughs> so I really encourage if you're going to share your work on Facebook, especially if somebody asks if you can do something and you tell them, yes, you can, please show your work so that we can... Um, kind of trust that that is something that we can do instead of spending a lot of time trying to figure something out that just isn't going to work. Um, I'll put the links to the Sew It, Sew Art and Sew It Pro groups that I'm included in on Facebook and um, any other kind of links that I think will be helpful down in my description. Thanks guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Okay, so here's the top part of the split design. The pictures that I took of the die line and the tack down for some reason wouldn't come through um, off of my iPhone. It wouldn't let me send it. So I had to skip forward to the part where um, it gave me the die line. I set down my fabric. It gave me the tack down. I cut it out and then it did the final um, satin stitch on it. And so here's the one at the bottom. Um, it did the die line and then I laid the fabric over the top of it and it did the tack down and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out and it's gonna finish doing the um, satin stitch on the bottom. And the reason why we do the the, the heart and the line um, in two different colors when we're digitizing it is so that, it, because when if we try to do it all at once, it's not really gonna know how to follow the path really nicely and it's gonna jump around a lot. If you do it with two different colors um, and then go ahead and, you know, finish it with the same color like I'm going to, um, your two different colors separate each other so that the stitches can be separate stitches. If you have them the same color and connected to each other, it's all going to be one big satin stitch and that's fine, but the paths don't follow very nicely and so are. So um, separating your colors make it much easier, much nicer. So this is going to show you the bottom part um, and the first line the, the die line for the first part and that's going to get the top part of your little heart, bottom heart and you can cut that like I've done right here and then it's going to um, give us a tack down over the top of that line and then it's just going to make a really nice pretty satin stitch edging around the whole thing. Okay I zoomed in on that so you can see the tack down on the line part and even though it's not tacking down any fabric on the outer edges it's still going to make those edges nicer and fuller so here we go is the whole almost completely finished image before i take it into not take it into oh my gosh here's it before it does the lettering that we did in sew Up pro so here's the finished and in about two seconds it's going to show you the one that has ella on it and um, there you go, it's all finished. And like I said, sew, art, sew outs are extremely important because as you can tell, I probably wanna go in and tweak these a little bit more, maybe change the angles, um, do some, you know, just kind of play with it and see what I really like with the satin stitch because it's kind of choppy to me. Alrighty, and that's why sew, art, sew outs are really important. And, um, you know, that way you know that you're making a good quality product. Alrighty, thank you guys so much um, again for all of your encouragement and it's just been really fun. I have so much fun making these. <laughs> Talk to you guys soon. Thanks.